Hey everybody, so this is part two of my Christmas Island trip, and it's specifically on Trevally. One of the dreams of everyone going to the island is catching one of those human-sized predators that eat birds that you've seen on YouTube. And you can find Trevally on the shallow flats, especially when the tide's high and the water is a little bit deeper, or you can find them swimming around the edges looking for unsuspecting fish that swim past into the deep area. So if you remember from my first video, um, I had that blow up following a trigger, and that's kind of an example of in the shallow area. And here on the same day, I also had an example of just casting into the deep blue area and seeing what I got. And it turned out to be a bluefin trawl again. So one of the cool things about the island is you never know what you're going to get. And here I was actually targeting a bonefish that I saw. And you can tell by the slow stripping I'm doing. Trevally usually you want to strip as fast as possible, but they'll still hit a fly uh, even if it's not going fast. They're just that aggressive. And you can tell by how my line just snaps in. And this one actually had more weight than the last fish you saw. And I think this was probably one of the bigger trevallis that I caught uh, on the trip. I think this total video clip was over three minutes, so um, it wasn't the typical just wait for them to tire in a minute and they come in. So you might have heard uh, my guy TJ tell me to lift the rod higher and I guess I was maybe too it's used to trying to apply harder. side pressure and <laughs> here you want to keep your line away from the coral so they prefer you to keep the rod up higher. Can I get a picture of them? Yeah. So come. definitely not Why a man eater, but I just want to take a picture of compared to the other trolley I had been getting up to that point, this one was pretty big, so I was pretty stoked. Sorry about the water drops in the next video, but this clip gives you an example of how fast they are. So you can see I was trying to target that swimming guy, and then I just immediately cast in another direction. And that's because the guy just saw a black mass just coming straight at me. And that's typical of what I experience with most Trevally here. Like, you don't have much time to cast. You just see a black shadow just coming straight at you or across you. I don't know if you see that black shadow on the top uh, so third of the blue? screen yeah, yeah. by the transition to deep water, but that was actually a big barracuda just hovering around there, I think. You're done. So this was probably one of my most favorite moments on the trip because I could see something blowing up bait fish in the distance. So I walked towards it, cast towards the blow up, and boom, got slammed right away. And there's just something different about fighting fish in really shallow water. It's like they have nowhere to go except laterally, so they fight a little bit differently. So at this point, you're probably starting to wonder where the actual GT are, and I'll get to it. One of the things that uh, I kind of discovered is there's actually a lot more smaller GTs than there are bigger ones. And this is a good example. one. This was a really cool clip because um, it's not the fish that uh, makes this cool clip, but it's what happens to the fish. 
So I noticed some like blood dripping out of its gills while I was swimming around. I saw this red cloud and then it swims towards this black tip shark. And then suddenly the shark just turns on. Up to this point, the sharks had done nothing other than just swim away from us and it just went into kill mode and basically ripped this guy in half. Who's still uh, squirming in my hand. Got lucky it wasn't a big one. Because <laughs> it wrapped on me. <laughs> and I threw this clip in here because this was actually my first GT that I caught. I mean, I guess some people call it white or... trimoly, but what I saw with the media, they're one. basically white when they're young and they turn black when they get really old. But still a fun fish to catch. Now, this was another cool experience, even though I didn't hook on. Um, I think the reason I didn't hook on was because there's two of us oh, casting at the same fish, but that's just what happens when you get dropped off on a spot and they show up. And you can see, like, they're just like missiles on the flats going by you. Okay. Yeah, after, here's uh, my fishing partner Steve uh, hooked onto a pretty decent GT, at least from what we were catching at that point. Here's another example of how fast they are. Like, when I cast, I thought I was gonna land right in front of them, but I was already too late. Like, I had cast over their backs, and you could see four missiles just flying by me. I mean, this was basically my experience. Like, uh, my guide, Max, basically told me to drop on the first false cast, another one and I coming? added one more false cast. And there's another one that came down this channel, and you can see I cast toward that big splash because something it slams with a bait fish. That was a huge mistake. I should have just cast down the channel again. Took the shot that was more likely. This one's probably going to haunt me from this trip just because I felt like this was my best chance of actually hooking onto one. So this one was another good shot because he had saw one coming across from the other side of the point. <laughs> and I was actually confused because I saw something that looked like a tail in the middle of the sandy area but that was not what he was looking at and he never corrected me so I, I didn't know where I was casting but you can see that uh, I actually had a take I just didn't hook on to it in the end that was the one GT dedicated day and you saw see that the weather basically just turned to crap it was windy rainy and couldn't see much anymore so Here's a pretty funny clip. Uh, this was the only fish I caught in my 11 weight. And you can see it's not putting much of a bend on the rod. That's because it turned out to be a little guy. But at least the rod didn't get skunked. And this was cool. Something was blowing up the bait fish by the fishing trawler. And that's actually where most of the big guys were. If you trolled around that fishing trawler, you had a good shot of getting a 60 pounder. But we weren't into that, so oh well. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, and I'll probably do Bonefisher Triggers next. Thanks.